Well, they're here, the Truth Series. We dive into every position group. We look at the truth of their performances over the course of the year. Sometimes where guys finish isn't exactly what they did for your fantasy team. Today we start at the quarterback position, and we talk about some teams that, look, we went into the year thinking one thing, they ended up something else, and they cost fantasy players dearly. So we take a look at that. We look at the truth. Enjoy. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. The Fantasy Footballers Podcast, Thursday, January 19th. We're into the truth, and the truth shall set you free. We've uh, we've done the deep diving. Jason has poured over numbers, and we are looking at quarterbacks today, the top 10 quarterbacks of this past season. And the quarterback position, even as a whole, which I think this year is very different than mm-hmm. other years. I think we've, we're seeing some changes in the NFL, so we'll we'll get into all that and uh, have that have an effect on our 2023 outlook. Yeah, I, I think we've been doing this long enough to to notice the trends at each position and how that can change the way you look at the next season's fantasy drafts. Um, I think we're kind of moved. We've moved beyond the kind of default first few years, late round quarterback. That's the way we're going to go because other people aren't going to go that way. We're seeing some more trends at the quarterback position that I think may change the way you look at that decision. Would you agree with that? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I would. I think a lot of lessons to be learned, and uh, we're going to teach them. And fantasy players are, we're just, we are sharper now. The 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 late round quarterback worked so well over and over because well, I mean number one you would have fans or or players of in fantasy football taking their quarterback number one way too early but two not respecting the the cheat code of guys that run like realizing how much of an edge it it gave that player and you would look at early round quarterback picks or which should say fantasy football players looked at that that's safe. I don't have to like running backs. They bust wide receivers have bad seasons. But if, if I take a quarterback here, it's safe. And that was not the case because you would look back. The top 12 ADP of quarterbacks looked nothing like the final 12 that that finished there. But over the last three to four years or so, we're getting much better at predicting who the top quarterbacks are going to be. And I think there's some logic behind that becoming easier due to the running quarterback. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. that's a very predictable, you know, we're not relying on rushing touchdowns from the quarterback position. We're not relying on, you know, passing touchdowns, which, you know, look at the career of Matt Ryan, how variable that was throughout, or Matthew Stafford Just in Detroit. Like, all of them, all pocket passers. You can have up years, down years. You can years. have a, a season that looked like Joe Burrow this year, or you can have a season that looks like Justin Herbert this year, where coming into the season, he would have been a, you know, a top three consensus fantasy quarterback because last year he was fantastic what was the 40 plus total touchdowns that essentially cut in half and because if you are if you are reliant so much on the rest of the offense to get things done and you don't you can't take it upon yourself when things break down like Jalen Hurts or Josh Allen you're at you're at their will and and things can go wrong easily and think about other player dependencies Yes. You have injuries, that's going to directly affect your, I'll call it your bottom line of touchdowns, whereas the running game, it's there regardless of whether you're throwing, you know, Dallas Goddard yes. gets hurt or doesn't get hurt. Justin Fields was like, I don't even need <laughs> wide receivers. You, don't, right. you, you can get rid of all of them. That's fine. Which it is kind of interesting that the two kind of later round, not late, but later round breakouts this year, one was a pocket passer in Joe Burrow that established himself, and one was the running quarterback in Jalen Hurts, who who was uh, very consistent. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. We'll talk all about the quarterback position, break down the trends, 
and uh, look at those numbers here shortly. I do want to get into this quick question at the top. And by the way, you can follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. We're here all off season, two shows a week, an extra show at jointhefoot.com. The quick question is up for interpretation, I think, on what this represents. But it is which NFL team ended up being the most different from how you envisioned them before the 2022 season. So, uh, Mike, why don't you lead the way with, I think, probably sure. the, the vote getter in this category. So I'm going to read you uh, some statistics here. These are from uh, previous years from a quarterback. His touchdown percentage, which if you're not familiar, that's the percent of attempts that turn into a, a touchdown around the league. Av the league average is like four and a half percent or so. And then you have their players that you know this player is going to finish higher. They just they're far more efficient, especially when it comes to throwing touchdowns. Uh, I'll just I'll go back a few years. So let's go, you know, eight point two percent, six percent, seven point two percent, six point three, three point three percent, and that is of course Russell Wilson, who made the gigantic splash trade. Well, he didn't, but the teams did. He goes from Seattle to the Denver Broncos. And all, I think all public thought process was this is a great move for the Denver Broncos because Russell Wilson is a good quarterback and we believe that he still is a good quarterback at this moment of time, but he was not. He was in fact very, very bad for not only for fantasy football, but football in general. So to have his statistics plummet, in, in such a fashion where he threw 16 passing touchdowns. Granted, he missed a few games, but this was the first time ever in his career that he has failed to surpass 20 passing touchdowns. Ever. It is and just he got a really big check. Like, a really, really big check. Yeah. So I, Denver, certainly the what comes out of that is the impact that – Sutton could make yes and Judy the, the the, entire cast of characters for Denver were lost Javante where sh they should have been like maybe you didn't believe the full breakout was coming but you had to at least see oh the path for these guys to be solid weekly fantasy football starters where I don't even have to think about it I'm gonna get a wide receiver three wide receiver two well and it's it's not just the fantasy footballers opinion ours or players opinions you look at the Vegas lines of Super Bowl uh odds for winning uh the either the division or that's that the MVP race uh to start the year you look at betting props and it's like Denver was supposed to be good. Russ yeah. was the highest percentage of tickets and money bet for NFL and MVP at bet G, uh, MGM. I, I mean, and then it was so unthinkably bad that they're, I mean, because their defense was so good. Their defense was one of the best in the league this year. And yeah, their they defensive still, coordinators getting tons of head coaching interviews. They still lost almost all their games. That's how bad Russ was. I, I, I'm going to throw Tampa Bay in the mix. Now, I. Yeah. I did go on record and say this was, you know, the year that Brady's going to see his demise. But what Tampa did that Denver didn't do was, and, and maybe it's more a product of, of Brady's career or how, you know, Cortland Sutton wasn't ever at a Mike Evans level of production. That's fair. Uh, neither was, you know, God, Godwin was an elite producer in fantasy. The, the Tampa Bay situation this year was you had no dominators on this offense in any way, shape, and form. And even though I thought, yeah, Brady might slow down, you still imagine you're going to get some vintage throughout the year. And they were the team that would tease you into the belief that next week will be the week they get it going. Brady is the kind of player that will stabilize the Arians' departure. He will stabilize the lack of an offensive line. He will figure out a way to make it happen. And week in, week out, all through the season, minus week 17 for two players, there weren't dominators on the Tampa Bay offense. And this was a, a really impactful, important, highly drafted fantasy offense. And I think Tampa just showed you that sometimes, Tampa and Denver for this, for this matter, what you see at the beginning of the year might be all you get. You know, for both of those teams, there were probably, and I, I you know, we had those discussions true, also, but at the very beginning of the year, I'm sure there was some talk about, well, go buy low. 
Go buy low on on uh, Sutton. Go buy low on Russ. Go buy low on Brady. Go buy low on on Evans. But they just were what they were. Yeah, I mean, it, you just assume with those quarterbacks, those known commodity quarterbacks, that they're going to get get it together, and they didn't. And that goes hand in hand with my pick for the team that surprised me from what we thought going into the year with what we know coming out of the year, which is the Indianapolis Colts. Uh, they got a huge quarterback upgrade or the potential for that, having a strong offensive line with Matt Ryan coming to town. It, nope. No, they didn't. Also, they don't have a good offensive line. They they suck. Their coach, he's going to be fired. They're going to hire some coach that is not a coach. They're going to hire a dude. They're going to create a coach and, you know, really go after that number one pick. So what did they end up with? The fourth pick overall. This was a team that I, I thought they were going to win the division coming in. Um, ahead of and it was there for the taking. Uh, yeah, I mean, this division was not the the most difficult to win, and they were out of the running. They just completely sucked. So it's ironic that this quick question on today's show, unplanned, it wasn't like, hey, well, let's figure out a way to talk more about the quarterbacks on the truth of quarterback series. But the 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 three biggest whiffs here of being wrong about offenses were because we were wrong about the quarterback, that the quarterback was not Russ and Matt Ryan and, and Tom Brady were bad. Yeah. yeah. Look, looking at, uh, as you were mentioning the Tampa Bay pass catchers, a my, it's mind blowing to me. Chris Godwin had his highest amount of targets and highest amount of receptions. In his career this year, 142 targets, 140 or 104 receptions. That's the first time he's ever broken 100 receptions in a season. He did it in 15 games played. He, he barely managed to get over 1,000 yards because his yards per completion was 9.8. The lowest in his career up till that point was in 2021 at 11.3. And he had the, uh, the lowest touchdown amount since his rookie season. Uh, Kyle shared this with us. The Buccaneers did not convert a third and eleven or longer the entire season. They were zero for forty one. True, zero for forty one on that's third and true? eleven or longer. Yeah, that's true. It's from Greg Allman too, their beat reporter. Yeah, so so this was a team that had no big play potential. I mean, that they, is unbelievable. That, I mean, that's that's one of the craziest stats I've ever heard. An entire season you don't convert one third you don't and get long. Lucky on one third and eleven. The the Bruce Arians absence. I mean. You could it, maybe it's all Tom Brady's fault, but the the Bruce Arians leaving this team had was detrimental to the offense. Yeah, it, I mean, every year there are teams that you envision uh, going one direction. Yeah, it's he, one of the reasons you don't necessarily want to put all your eggs in a certain team's basket. Like we we get that question a lot in the off season. It's like, oh, I've got the I've got the quarterback and the running back. I got the wide receiver and the running back. You know, if it's an offense that you are sure of. It can work out, but if you get one of those bad draws and the season goes differently and the, the coaches are fired, um, you, you're you in trouble, and you're trying to cash in on the, ah, oh, they're going to figure it out. Here, take my players from me. Um, but, yeah, those, those three teams definitely took fantasy football players for a ride. Uh, let's talk quarterbacks. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! All right, Jason, you were talking about some kind of uh, league-wide passing trends. We were talking about rushing quarterbacks. I know that this was the first time in history that quarterbacks surpassed 10,000 total rushing yards league-wide. So the rushing quarterback uh, plan... Mm -hmm. is uh, continuing to permeate out to more and more teams. And obviously for fantasy football, when they run for 10 yards, it's like they threw for 25. It's a broken system, but take advantage of it. Um, the quarterback scoring as a whole was really bad. Um, it was down drastically this year, and I think there are uh, a handful of reasons. You just named one of them, right? The passing yardage is going to go down when the rushing yeah, yardage can't pass and run at the same time. goes up. So uh, you lose some of that, but... The passing touchdowns, the second fewest combined passing touchdowns over the last decade, 14 teams had fewer than 20 passing touchdowns. Is gross. Um, I <laughs> yeah, think that's a, really bad. That is really bad. I think part of that is injury. 
we had a lot of injuries to, to, to quarterbacks this year. Only 16 teams, which is half of the league, nice. had their quarterbacks start more than 14 games. Ten teams started at least three different quarterbacks this year. Baltimore, the Jets, the Dolphins, Arizona, the Niners, uh, Titans, Colts, Manders, Carolina, and the Rams all had three different three or more different starters. And um, and it was a, a down year in deep passing as well. The fewest 20-plus yard completions over the last seven years. Only 11% of attempts were deep. Only 37% of those attempts were completed. So I think the fact that we saw a lot of backups playing a lot of football this year, combined with a lot of stalwart stars. I'm looking at you, Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady. I thought you were looking at me. I, I technically I was looking. You at had you. zero passing touchdowns last year, sir. Yeah, but if he's looking at me and I'm, no, that's fair. You're calling that's me fair. a star, man. I, well, you are a star. Thanks. Um, but I was talking about the stalwart of. You're more like the wart. Yeah. yeah. You have Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers, and Russell Wilson. Three Hall of Fame quarterbacks, potentially with in Russell's case, that all took massive steps backwards in the stat counting category. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you there. Those were guys that you could write in every year as being contributors in that regard, and they weren't this year. And when we break down the truth, since this is the first episode of uh, a series, I want to break down what we're looking at. And uh, we'll go through a number of things about these players, but we'll start with the truth data that we gather looking at four-point-per-passing touchdown league scoring systems and breaking players' uh, finishes down into great games at the quarterback position. We're calling that 26 or more points. Good games, more than 21 points. And bust games, fewer than 15 points on the week, which generally puts you outside the top 12 at the position. Yes, and and – Technically, in the data, we have a super bust category that is fewer. Super than oh, yeah, yeah. What? It, yeah, we it's, have a super. We do have a super bust. Um, it's it's if you <laughs> Boston. Thank you. <laughs> it's if you score fewer than ten fantasy points, like you you destroyed uh, someone's week there. And so, um, when we take a look at this data for the quarterbacks, we nobody is starting a quarterback that is injured, so we take the that out. We don't factor in injury. So obviously. Um, someone that missed a handful of games, they might do better in this metric, but we're just looking at like when a quarterback was played in a situation where you knew you were going to start them, how did they perform? So um, some of the quarterbacks in week 18, we've also om omitted maybe that week. If we knew going into that week, like, oh, we, you know, we said you can't start in week 18 uh, Tom Brady. And because he might not play the game, and then he plays half the game and doesn't play. So we're just saying in live action where you were starting them, how did these quarterbacks fare, um, and did they cross thresholds that mattered for fantasy and how often? Because you've got two sides of the consistency coin that we've seen with quarterbacks over many years. You've got the Phillip Rivers side where he ends the year as a good quarterback because he's never – Super busting. He's he's always going out there and and throwing for fifteen points every single week, but he's never really helping you win fantasy games. So we try to factor all of it in: great games, good games, bad games, and just see when they were playing, how much did they actually help your fantasy win total? And I think this year's number five overall quarterback might be in that new Philip Rivers mm -hmm. category, but yes, we'll get to is. it. All right, number one on the list. Don't don't get me fired up already. <laughs> You're free to defend him. Uh, Patrick Mahomes is number one on our list. Uh, he had a total consistency ranking of number three, third most consistent quarterback. He was drafted as the QB two off the board. And, um, I mean, we shouldn't doubt him. He is uh, – I, I saw – did you guys see he's about to pass Kurt Warner in, like, playoff – either playoff starts or total yeah. yards or whatever? And then Kurt Warner replied, and he's like – like Patrick Mahomes is twenty seven. He's like I did not, I didn't have my first game until I was twenty eight <laughs> years old. Um, yeah, get wrecked. <laughs> yeah. Well, Patrick Mahomes forty one percent of the time it was a great performance. Fifty nine percent of the time it was a good performance. Just six percent of games were busts. He was incredible after losing Tyreek Hill. After having a team that 
essentially adjusted their entire game plan. Um, they had the lowest play action rate, the deep passing game, no McCall Hardman for parts of the year, uh, an up and down receiving core with plenty of drops from, you know, uh, Sky Moore and, and Juju. And, you know, it was a, it was never a, a, an offensive group that you could expect production from outside of Travis Kelsey and late season McKinnon. And yet, the production for Patrick Mahomes did not waver. The, it didn't waver in part because they they did not have a great running game through the majority of the season. Uh, Pacheco came on at the end and had uh, some some success on the ground. But while McKinnon was great, that was all through the air. So this team was one that it was just look, we're going to throw the ball more. We're our you know our passing rate is above expectation, and we've got the best quarterback out there. Doesn't matter the weapons. He proved that. And honestly, this next year. His weapons are only going to get better. You you've got a Kadarius Tony that's going to be, uh, you know, healthy. Well, I mean, we think sure. there's no reason to assume that he he wouldn't be, but other than you know history. Um, and then you've got second year for Sky Moore, and they are going to have the opportunity to grab another great wide receiver. I I saw the latest uh, mock draft I looked at had uh Jackson Smith and Jigba going falling to them at the end of the first. That would not be fair. Um, so oh, Patrick, man. Patrick Mahomes next year <laughs> it, uh, it, and every year is, you know, he is basically what Aaron Rodgers was yep. for a long stretch for fantasy where he was the number one quarterback or the number two worst case number three for the better part of a decade. And that's that's what we have here. He finished the season as the number one quarterback. Congratulations. Yeah, and he's he's been there before. He he also is the second quarterback in history to lead the league in passing yards without a thousand yard receiver. So when you have the stability of Andy Reid and the skill set of Patrick Mahomes, that's enough to trust he will be at the tippy top of the quarterback ranks sans injury every single year. Thirty four of forty one passing touchdowns. Yeah, this is wild. Inside the red zone. <clears throat> that's not so that's that, not Mahomesian. Like, I was gonna say, there's no Tyreek over the top. It's just I figure it out. He just yeah. gets it done. And the nice thing is their defense isn't good great. Enough. Yeah. And when people play against Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes, they play different. Like they go for it on fourth downs more. They are far more aggressive. They'll they'll start the game onside kicking because they just are like, well, we've got to score forty eight if we want to win this game. So yeah. it's great. Yeah. So number two, Josh Allen. Josh Allen was drafted as the QB1 overall, uh, about eight picks ahead of where Mahomes was drafted. Consistency ranked for Josh Allen, number two. He was also the uh, number one in overall fantasy points per game and led all quarterbacks in top five performances. He had 11 top five performances, um, which was more than his previous two quarterback one overall seasons. You know, this, the only kind of, uh, what do you call it? The chink in the armor was the fact that he threw a lot of interceptions this year. It sure. was uh, a career high 20 turnovers that even carried on into the playoff game that we just saw. But I mean, what more can you say about Josh Allen consistent on a weekly basis? Um, what was incredible about those turnover games is that they were better for him. Mm -hmm. They do have a good defense. See, that's the thing. Buffalo has a, a much better defense than Kansas city. So in games where Josh Allen threw an interception, he actually averaged more fantasy points than in games when he didn't throw a pick and almost double the yardage on the ground. So he was forced to do more because the team, uh, you know, he put him in a bad position. Yeah, and if, if you look, obviously you'll notice he is ahead of Patrick Mahomes in our truth um, metric, and the reason why is because he had unbelievable week-winning performances all the time. You just talked about that more than in his other number one finishes. To me, he was... You know, he was the best quarterback for fantasy when he started the year as the quarterback two, four, three, five, one, three. It it just felt like he the, he should be the number one overall pick. Obviously, slowed down a little bit the second half of the year, but thankfully got it back together for the fantasy playoffs. And Mike, you remember he had an injury, yeah, in the middle the, of the uh, year that yeah, you know, it was the elbow. Yeah, I was trying to remember what ligament it was. Um, elbow ligament. Yes, yeah, it was yeah. the elbow yeah. ligament. Okay. I remember. But, I mean, do you think that that contributed to some of that middle season yes. troubles? Yeah, you, you could see him making some different decisions during those games, but played through, played incredible. Next year, I 
I can't imagine he won't be my number one quarterback. Probably our number one quarterback. I mean, you the like Diggs, Diggs and Gabe Davis another year, but then like the more integration of Khalil Shakir. Just watch watching the impact he had on that playoff game with just a, a small amount of routes because they're making him split time with uh, with uh, the Beasles and John Brown. Hopefully Shakir can earn that as the full time role because if those are the three guys out there and like and James Cook is in the backfield, uh, Josh Allen could be even better, which is ridiculous. Forty one percent great games, uh, which is the same number as Mahomes. Seventy one percent good. Mahomes is at fifty nine percent, and then bus games twelve percent of the time. Um, impressive season yet again for Josh Allen. Uh, and will continue to be, yeah. you know, kind of a, uh, you know, where Cam was uh, to some degree in the early part of his career, for, for, you know, where you could count on the rushing. Um, they call his number on purpose. You know what I mean? It's not just scrambles. It's it's like quarterback draws. So it it was an impressive performance. Yeah, to me, and I I, I think most people might have the four star quarterbacks this year. To me, there were three, and three that I'm going to look at next year as a change in philosophy where I, I, I want one desperately. I want Mahomes, Josh Allen, or this next quarterback who is actually the number one quarterback in our truth series, but you'll have to wait. <laughs> yeah, you see me reaching over. <laughs> oh, yeah, you'll have to wait to find out who it is. What? When did we turn into a radio show? <laughs> That was good, a great tease. Thank you. Thank you. I bet you people stayed around because they want to find out um, who this next guy is. Yeah. they Number one in consistency. Number three on the year. And really, I think number three on the year simply because he got injured in the at the end of the year. My guy Jalen Hurts uh, was unbelievably great. Not, he, was, uh, he, he won the uh, footy award for the quarterback of the year, and rightfully so because he was the best fantasy player draft pick at the quarterback position uh, by a wide margin you you got the opportunity to get a rushing a hyper rushing quarterback with upgraded weapons in the sixth round as opposed to you know spinning up that second or third round pick for those other two guys and he was so consistent his great games were over 50 percent his good games were over 80 percent only seven percent bust rate he was pretty much flawless on the course did we of the season. count did, did week 18 count for his we did count we did count week 18 uh which was awful for him uh yeah. it sucks uh, obviously that shouldn't be counted in most leagues because you're not playing in week 18 but he did it was an important game he to them. he played it. the whole yeah. game you would have started him if you had him but and he's saying he, like aside from that across the whole season through week 15 he had one down game week four uh against the jacksonville jaguars and and he was a quarterback 15, not like yeah, – Yeah, and it wasn't even catastrophic. He he very much was what Josh Allen was his first breakout season from a draft capital perspective, what Lamar Jackson was his first breakout season from a draft capital perspective, and um, – What Justin Fields will be next year. I don't know. I mean, I you think Justin Fields is a six-round pick next year? Yeah, I think he'll be around this draft okay. spot, and I think – So you're already pre-calling next year's – Jalen Hurts, yes, my I guy, am. Justin Fields. Yes, that is right. Uh, that won't be allowed by the uh, the the. Hey, panel. I learned my lesson on on Pittman. I the, I already got him on the board. The, the the panel of Justin Fields truthers at the island that I described, which is uh, it's just me and and the Borgononi. So you're gonna have to no, I, talk he, to some people. He's gonna be a my guy, despite the fact he'll be on another team. Ooh. Whoa, I don't care where he is. Uh, no, I mean, uh, Jalen Hurts, let's get back to that. He was uh, a little bit of an underperformer against top 16 defenses compared to his average. Uh, I mean, he, he crushed bottom 16 defenses. Missed Dallas Goddard for four weeks during the year. Uh, was great on the road. Improved as a passer. Number one in passer rating versus zone coverage. Third in yards per attempt. Didn't hurt that uh, Justin Fields was throwing to nobody, and he was throwing to arguably two of the top 15 wide receivers in football, A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith. And Jalen Hurts, something that won't change for him going forward, 
that is a known commodity and is kind of it's it's a uh you know it's a cheat code within the cheat code right he's already got the cheat code of being a, 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 a mobile quarterback but what they have done with their rugby push uh quarterback <laughs> yeah. sneak when they need one yard they can guarantee one yard. He he gets it at like a 90% clip. They call his number on that quarterback sneak for a yard over and over and over and over. So when you get on the one yard line, which is usually a death knell for the quarterback, you know, you, you, you're, you're unhappy when someone is tackled at the one because you're like, no, they needed to get in because now I'm going to lose it to the running back. It's like if you're close enough, if it's the two yard line through the five yard line, okay, I'm like, oh, oh no, Miles Sanders. But if they're on that one or in, that's Jalen Hurts. It's almost a guaranteed rushing touchdown. He had 43 red zone carries. This is a big reason why. It's the most of all time. It was uh, a home run. It was a home run from start to finish, really, for Jalen Hurts. Obviously, the injury at the very end. You know, you would have loved to have had him. Jason lost sleep and years to his life because he had to deal with that injury. So, you know, there's a cost to Jalen Hurts for your blood pressure, but... Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it, it was worth the cost in the sixth round. Um, incredible. Number four, Joseph Burrow, also a sixth-round pick, and was the consistency rank of number four this year. 24% great games, 47% good, 18% bust. Didn't have Jamar Chase for four games. Didn't have Hayden Hurst for four games. Had some offensive line injuries, and yet put up a delicious – 4,400 yards, 35 touchdowns, just 12 picks, and looked the part. Yeah, he, he looked fantastic. The My hesitancy for Joe Burrow coming into the season for everything was how much will they actually let him throw because last year when he went on the full hot streak, it was his efficiency was like historically off the boards. So the my argument for Joe Burrow is he either has to replicate that or Coach Zach Taylor has to – let go of this high T. We're going to give Joe Mixon the ball 10,000 times every single game, and we need to be a passing team. And they did. They became one of the the one of the heaviest pass over expectation teams in the league. So it happened. Joe Burrow was allowed to cook. He was fantastic. He was, I mean, just sensational for fantasy football. I would say the one downside here for Joe Burrow is it's just that the fact of the division that he's in, the those those AFC North matchups, like they do slow him down. You know, two of his worst games against Cleveland, he had uh, he had a number one overall finish against Pittsburgh, but Baltimore, he was the quarterback eight and the quarterback eighteen. So the fact that you know that those games are going to be just uh, just an absolute sludge fest of of football slowed down. And those defenses can they can perform against Joe Burrow and that and the high flying offense. Look at the playoff game; like that should have been an absolute rout. What it, it felt like on paper, Joe Burrow versus a a backup quarterback with with no weapons, and yet the game was very very close, and they could hold Joe Burrow down. So that's my only knock against Joe Burrow is that you know that six times a year you're going to have some tougher matchups, maybe four because the Steelers are not what they used to be. But, but they'll get but, back there, and that's yeah, what the division is about. There. But other than that, I mean, Joe Burrow is, when he's not facing his division, he's going to put up monster numbers. Yeah, I mean, Joe Burrow is fantastic. He's a he's clearly the dude. He's got it. He's proven. I mean, he went to the Super Bowl last year, could go back again this year. He is a world-class, top-flight quarterback. But for fantasy football purposes, you are right to comp him to Justin Fields, who last year was what, the quarterback two? Justin or Herbert. Justin, Justin Herbert, sorry. Um, because he's a pocket passer. I mean, he can scramble a little bit, but that's not his game. So there is – He at least has the advantage of Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, Tyler Boyd is a real big greater sign than Mike Williams and Keenan Allen. That's a huge part of it. It is, it is certainly a, a big part of it. But my point is without that rushing, not only do you have a little bit more volatility in his season-long outcome next year, but you also have – a little less ceiling because, you know, if, if you're in four-point scoring and you're not having a bunch of rushing touchdowns. So, for instance, you look at per game, uh, number one quarterback was tied. Josh Allen and Jalen Hurts both had 
six points per game. Right there with him, Patrick Mahomes, 25.2. Well, the number four quarterback was Joe Burrow, but he was down 22 points per game. You know, that it's a, it's a significant per game drop if he is drafted where these other guys are drafted next year sure. for, for a pocket passer. Uh, it was interesting that he was the only quarterback to finish number one overall three times, uh, including back-to-back -back weeks. And like Mike said, the coaching staff got out of the way, let Joe Burrow they do did. his thing. And Jamar Chase is in much more in the, uh, you know, what Stafford had in Detroit with Calvin Johnson category compared to, look, Mike Williams can't stay healthy. Um, their offensive coordinator just got fired. So we'll see what's in store. But, yeah, I mean, this is a situation where – Taking the highest drafted pocket pocket passer is a huge risk. I think if his if his name's not Patrick Mahomes, I was just I was just thinking, man, Patrick Mahomes is good. Like you <laughs> want to know the truth about quarterbacks, Patrick Mahomes is better than everyone because I'm looking at it like okay, he's got uh, Jamar Chase. He's maybe he could could be the best wide receiver in the NFL. I don't know, uh, and and T Higgins is so good, and you got Jalen Hurts who's got. A.J. Brown and Devonta like Smith. T. Higgins would immediately Dallas be the Goddard. best wide receiver for Kansas City. Absolutely. You you got Stephon Diggs with, you know, everyone's got these great wide receivers, and then you got Ho Hom, Patrick Holmes throwing it to like MVS, <laughs> Marquez Valdez Scantling, and and older version of Juju Smith Schuster. No problem. Yeah, probably even more of a an argument to how good Travis Kelsey is and how much he helps the Fair. team. But uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's exactly what you said. Aaron Rodgers in the in the past, there were other pocket passers that would move around behind him. He was always number one. I think that that is definitely something that can happen here for Joe Burrow. Uh, big points gap between Joe Burrow and the number five well, quarterback. Just real quick, did, uh, did we highlight this stat of because uh, I just I was anecdotally saying they were passing over expectation, but from after week two, second in pass rate over expectation second in expected points per play threw the ball on first down at a higher rate than any other team so nice. they i mean they started they had a couple weeks where the, where Zach Taylor was uh, kind of falling back to his old tricks or his old what he feels comfortable with when and, they were 0 and 2 yeah. <laughs> yes look i don't need to point it out but yeah, they didn't win those games, and then they unleashed the fury and said, "This is how you win: you let Joe Burrow do his thing." Well, Geno Smith is number five. Like I said, a big points gap between Burrow to Geno. Uh, this was very much an accumulation season for Geno Smith. He was eleven in consistency, fifth in total points. Uh, you had six percent great games, so you did not get ceiling very often. Twenty nine percent good games, twenty nine percent busts. But I think. You know, this is um, an adjusted context when you talk about Geno Smith. This was nowhere near where he was expected to to be. Huge testament to Geno himself. Huge testament to Metcalf and Lockett for being themselves and still being themselves, no matter whether Russell was there or not. Um, from week three on, he had 10 top 12 finishes, which was as many as Joe Burrow in that span, if you bring it down to number 12. And... Um, you know, he started every game, played very well, showed uh, a stability, I think, that we weren't expecting and could be back. I mean, he's a free agent. Yeah, I, I, I expect he will be back, and I want to give him all the props and kudos in real life for being good. He was not, uh, you know, an average quarterback. I think he was a very good quarterback, but for fantasy purposes, this is a stat accumulation. He was a quarterback eight on a per game basis. There were three other kind of stud quarterbacks out there that got injured this year. So they're, you know, they're not who we're talking about yet. They are all better than Gino for fantasy purposes going forward. The problem with Gino is, you know, you talk about oh, all those top 12 finishes was, you know, he's got an 11, an 11, an 11, a 12 during that span. And when you are sneaking into that, Oh, Philip Rivers style. Exactly. It, it's one of those things where you can build a fantasy roster around that. If you're grabbing him super late and the rest of your roster is loaded and you're just saying, I don't want to get a dud. You can do that. But outside of, you know, I, I think he had one big week on the entire season where he, uh, I think it was week four against Detroit, 31 fantasy points outside of that you know, two games over 21 points the rest of the season. He just didn't bust. He, he was very, uh, you know, steady. steady. But that's not going to win fantasy championships. Justin Fields comes in at number six. All right. Consistency rank of seven. 
But in the second half, that rank went up to fourth. And uh, 20% great, 40% good, 33% bust. This was, you know, the first four weeks of the season. So, yeah, what was his bust rate? They were they – were, It would have been 100% in those first four well, weeks. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like if 23, you, 27, 31, 26, not points, finish. When they – because the beginning of the season was a – a mismanagement of Justin Fields at who he is, who he is as an athlete and what he can do as a quarterback. They're trying to force him into something else. And then there was a clear shift of, all right, let's let Justin Fields do his thing. Let's let him run. And let's take a look at what the offense does then. So like, I mean, if you're because of that, if you, shift, ta if you take the, the weeks, I've got I mean, the answers just, for you. Okay, give it to so me. So if you because there was a legit shift where the coaching staff even came out and yes. said, Hey, we looked at these other mobile quarterbacks and we changed the system to fit Justin Fields, and they clearly found something different. Taking those first four weeks out and using this like truth algorithm, he would rank as the number three in the truth score. He would have had a twenty seven percent great, fifty five percent good, and only nine percent bust rate. <laughs> after uh, those first four games were figured out. And, and with a brand-new coaching staff, you can't even blame them for entering the season sure. with like a standardized, here's our NFL offense, and then going, it's not working, let's figure him out. Huge credit to the staff for making that adjustment. He was not good to start the year, became a, a dominator, lost Darnell Mooney, was still dominant, um, really he, impressive number one pick for the bears going into next year they have the most cap space they can get him more weapons and it's probably the best investment that they can make with these with these draft picks is just solidify all of those pieces and and take that san francisco model where you start to build out the weapons for your quarterback and make him successful yeah i mean if, if he's in the sixth round next year uh he'll be the quarterback on as many of my rosters as possible. Here's what I'll say. I think you're right. He'll be in the sixth round. If you don't have a player added to the offense that we talk about for more than three shows in the off season. So you're saying if they trade for uh, a Deandre Hopkins level guy, then he'll go ahead of the, he sixth will round. go way higher, especially with what we saw from look, you it's, it's now a template, right? Josh Allen plus Stefan Diggs equals breakout season Jalen Hurts plus AJ Brown equals breakout season I think at that point if we're coming in next year with that truth that you just shared about his consistency and you throw a Hopkins in the mix or you throw a high profile wide receiver option I don't know if in in very many leagues will make it that far yeah the my concern for what the Chicago Bears can do because Remember what they've they've already done. They traded what is it, pick thirty two now? <laughs> they traded pick thirty two for, for Chase Claypool and didn't even get to really see what he can do or be a part of this offense. I think that Chase Claypool can he can really help the Chicago Bears. He's not a number one wide receiver by any stretch. So the the question then becomes one, I mean, the, the I guess the very, very first question is do you the Chicago Bears, do they take a quarterback at one overall and then flip Justin Fields? That's which maybe they do that. There's arguments I've seen that are for that that are pretty compelling. But if they stick with Justin Fields, then they trade down, accumulate a bunch of picks, but they have so many so many problems with this team that I don't know that we get the splash at the at a skill position that we all want for fantasy football. It might it might the splash might be like two stud offensive linemen. And which doesn't feel sexy, but that would be a huge upgrade. One of the problems that should be highlighted for Justin Fields is that from about week 13 on when he tried to get up off the field it was difficult. He was that yeah. they were that dependent on his athleticism and his rushing totals and then he was hurt. He was beat up. I mean, he missed the final game of the year. Um, he had issues at the end of the year going in and out of the game. So you definitely want to highlight how great that rushing prowess was, but then you, you got to know what the math adds up to. I mean, Lamar has been beat up for two consecutive years. Um, we've seen this when, when quarterbacks push the limit in the rushing totals, you – by nature, mathematically, open yourself up to more risk being hit. Um, not every rush for Justin Fields looked anything like the rushes for Jalen Hurts. 
You know, Jalen Hurts right. were very, um, you know, it seemed much more strategic, <laughs> whereas Justin Fields seemed much more necessary. And the ends of those plays look a lot different from a slide from Jalen Hurts and a, uh, a a collision for Justin Fields. So and it's the, just something to be, you know, to be aware of. And, and like you said, the offensive line would be a big part. He was pressured 46% of the time. That was the most in the league. The, the free agent wide receiver class for this uh, off season. It isn't. There isn't one. It's Jacoby it, Myers. It's not. Yeah, I mean, it's it's highlighted by guys Lucky like guy. Jacoby Myers. But DJ Chark is in there as well. And well, that will not move him out of the sixth round for me. Did, oh, but but DJ Chark would have an impact to me. Like you, when you put a field stretcher who can be reliable. Like I mean, Darnell Mooney returning would sure. be would be I think the most significant thing. But um. But you know, the, if Claypool doesn't need a new contract and he comes, he's got one more year, yeah, right? Yes. So yeah, they don't have to re-sign him just yet. But all our the fields truthers in the meetings, we have our hopes and our dreams for one of these outstanding rookies to go there. I just I don't I don't see it happening, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, it's certainly not going to happen with number one overall. No, it would unless be a he trade trades back, it down. an yeah. accumulation, and then and then grab a. Yeah, I guess it depends on how far they trade back. Uh, Kirk Cousins coming in at number seven on our list. The quarterback 15 off the board. Consistency rank of 13. Uh, Jason, let me ask you a simple question. By the way, 6% great, 38% good, 31% bust. Based on what you've seen here, between Geno Smith at five and Kirk Cousins here at seven, which quarterback would you have preferred to have started every game of the year? Ooh, that's a tough one because they're they're very similar comps here. I I think I would have preferred to start Geno every single week. He was he had fewer bust games, and neither one of these guys really you know went out and won me weeks. There was a stretch of three games of greatness for Kirk Cousins. Thankfully, it came week fourteen, fifteen, and sixteen, where it was like yes. But you take those three games out, and he really never helped you win a game, and he did help you lose a couple. Yeah, no question. I mean, he finished 29th at the quarterback position in that disaster against Dallas, 25th against the Jets, 25th against Philly. Like, you play a great defense, and you, you, he's got a uh, crumble quotient. It's mm -hmm. a new stat. Mm -hmm. are, and, are we working that out? Yeah, it's the crumble quotient, and I don't know what quotients are. I'll be, I'll be, well, to be fair. Yeah, no, but this is one. But he, and I don't know if he's got a high one or a low one, but whatever it is, it's leading. he's leading the way. Yeah, it's very high. Yeah, so um, I'd go. I think it'd be high. It'd yeah. be a high quotient. Yeah, so a very high quotient. He, he, There's a thirty-eight. Yeah, he he. he <laughs> That's the quotient. He's got a thirty-eight. A 38. Yeah, on on a crumble quotient. And but, where do crumble cookies fit in to the quotient? It depends on whether they choose to sponsor the show and <laughs> right. they, and and help us gain <laughs> significant lbs. Yeah, they could be. They could. They could have a one on the crumble okay. quotient, which is good. Your move, crumble. Your move. <laughs> All right, Trevor Lawrence comes in at eight. Oh, I would say uh, Minnesota, though, they strike me as someone who could make a splash in the first or the second round for a wide receiver. Really? Yeah. Yeah, it, it makes sense. Adam Thielen is yeah, on Thielen. his way out. They've got uh, – honestly, Hawkinson might be their number two he going is. forward. Even yes. if they I might. think Osborne's a good player, though. Osborne I'd is be, okay. I'd be shocked if they invested there. The way their defense play, is playing, I'd be, I'd be really shocked because I think Osborne is – Ready to take the next step, and they traded for Hawkinson, so I'd be surprised. How, yeah, what was the draft capital they gave up? Like, do they still have a second round pick? I mean, it was it was, for a, Hawkinson? It was a lot, wasn't it? I think it, I think it was. Kyle has second. no idea, no idea, but I'll no look idea. It up. I've, they finally, stumped him at the very end of the season. Kyle has no clue what happened. The Hawkinson's a tight end for you, the Vikings. You taking a nap back there? What is happening? He doesn't even have his glasses on. Can you see? He's researching. Yeah. What There's, was the compensation? Do you know? Researching his, his eyelids. I mean, he, do you wear We're, contacts today? What's going on? I'm doing no work right now. Yes, clearly. He's got the owl mask on again. <laughs> All right. The Minnesota Vikings received tight end TJ Hawkinson, a 2023rd fourth round pick, and a 2024th conditional fourth round pick from the Lions. The Lions received a second and th a second round pick this year and a third round pick okay. the next year. Okay, there's so they no don't way. have a two. So there's no way they're taking I retract my yeah. statement. But they uh, they need more picks for defense. You know, free agent can land there. That's for sure. Thielen definitely is dissolving yeah. before our very eyes. 
Do you guys disagree with me though? You don't think KJ Osborne's a player? I, so I've, I've I think loved, he's actually a player. I've loved KJ Osborne. I went into this season; he was like my third highest uh, roster percentage on on underdog. I, I drafted him a lot because I thought I think of him. I thought of him as like a real think deal. Thought. You think thought. player, and I, you know, saw the end of Adam Thielen coming. So he and he was a super late round draft pick, and I I think because I invested so much in KJ Osborne this year and I didn't get the results I wanted, I'm like, I'm not sure he's going to be able to do it. That's where I'm at. He, he strikes me as more of like a Tyler Boydian type sure, of player. Sure, yeah. Which is it's Which, very good. I mean, you could have some good years. Boyd had some good years. Yeah. So if, if he's stuck in the two spot, like if Thielen is gone and it's Osborne, I, it could be okay. Yeah. Je Justin Jefferson's a delight across the field from you if sure. you uh, are on that team. So uh, the Vikings, you know the story, 11-0 and in one-score games. Captain Kirk really – not the quarterback I would have wanted. Trevor Lawrence came in at eight. Uh, consistency rank of 12, but that jumped. I mean, the first half of the year was 14 in consistency. The second half of the year, he was fifth. And I think we all know what we're watching with Trevor Lawrence, which is the uh, a young player with high draft capital, with a coach we trust, with weapons in the wide receiver room, good trustworthy running back. It's the ascension. This is, an op this is one of those guys that's going to be a six round pick next year that you're going, Oh, this could be one of those breakouts. Yeah. I mean, it reminds me a lot of Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow had, you know, a really strong end to a season where they, the offense kind of figured out how to unleash him. And then he went to the Super Bowl, had a great unexpected playoff run, came in this year and dominated. And you could see this happen with Trevor Lawrence. Obviously the weapons are um, a little bit up in the air. They're going to get Calvin Ridley added to this team. And then, Presumably, hopefully. hopefully. Oh, well, they, they, they traded for him, but his reinstation, reinstate. What? How do you say that word? Not reinstation. Reinstation sounds good to me. <laughs> I'm gonna reinstation. Look, reinstatement. Reinstatement. There yeah, we there go. Reinstation. That's the. That's 104.7. Oh, the on the FM. Yeah. Hmm. The FM radio joke <laughs> <laughs> for the boomers out there. Um, Ridley will be back next year, but I, I know what you're saying. They, they, Kirk, Kirk will be there. Ridley will be there. Zay Jones will be there. Those the are, real those are question done. is whether or not Evan Ingram is there. I think oh, they will re-sign him. Give him the money. Too important. Uh, give to him the, the money. Giving Evan Ingram the money is writing his death sentence. They already gave him the money. They gave him a one year. That ain't the that ain't the nine million. You want him bucks. to give him the shmoney? Yeah, for Schmingram. <laughs> No, you don't. You don't want to know what they need to do. They need to give them. They need to give them twelve million. One year, one year deal, hundred percent. One year, hundred percent, and, and, and have have it in writing. Team option, thirteen million the next year. Like we'll keep going, but it's our choice. You gotta, you gotta, it's, you look, want I, that? I'll give Evan Ingram all the credit for his his end of this season. It was incredible. It was very good. They, I'm not certain he will be that forever. They can franchise him if they need to. Um, Trevor Lawrence, uh, one of only two quarterbacks in NFL history to put up 4,000 passing yards, 25 passing touchdowns, five rushing touchdowns with those, uh, stretch Armstrong arms. And, uh, so long, you know, this was a year he played most of it as a 22 year old. I mean, he's a young, young quarterback. He's going to have some bumps in the road, but they're going to equip him. It looks like in Jacksonville and is a breakout candidate without question, 12% great. 35% good, 35% bust. Yeah, the bust games were his real problem. They, they were the Achilles heel from a fantasy perspective this year because when he busted, when he busted, he super busted. He had several games below that 10-point threshold. Super bust. You know, yeah, how do we not have a, a drop for that? Yeah, I didn't even know we had a super bust. Yeah, like, it, it is hidden, it I'm is I'm hidden it. behind the scenes. I was going to say, do it, I have to like join the foot to get this or what? <laughs> it, it does exist. Um, yeah, 5.7 against the Eagles, 6.8 against – uh, the Denver Broncos, 4.5 against the Texans, and then uh, not a super bust, but 10 points to finish the season. So those games really did destroy you for fantasy. Because he's so young, this team is so young, you kind of chalk that up to just you're going to have inconsistency, but his upside is certainly there. He had a number one overall finish on the season, and he had five top five finishes. So for a 22-year-old, Sky's the I mean, limit going forward. For all we know, we'll be talking about him as a defending Super Bowl champion. I mean, they're Maybe. still in the playoffs. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they are still in the playoffs. There for, you go. For all you know, 
But but we know. <laughs> <laughs> like, we know. Come it on. seems unlikely, but you never know. I'm uh, very happy for them to get to the second round, and what a great story. Nine and ten. Daniel Jones, Jared Goff. Daniel Jones, uh, weird year. Tenth in consistency, ninth in fantasy scoring. Seventh over the second half of the year. Busted 44% of the time. So, uh, you know, not great. 40, 41%. Most of that was the first half of the year, though. 41% uh, – or, sorry, 44% bust, 31% good, 13% great for him. Uh, didn't have weapons. Correct. You know, a little bit um, Justin Fields-esque in that regard where, you know, 708 rushing yards on the season, just 15 passing touchdowns. I don't know what Daniel Jones can become. I mean, he I think can become this, this the defending Super Bowl champion. <laughs> all, right, right? all right. For all we know. All right. That sounded dumber. <laughs> um, I don't know. I mean, this is a 15-touchdown season for Daniel Jones. It was impressive that he protected the football. He he doesn't throw the ball very far. Uh, that was a key to his success because we all know Daniel Jones has a Jameis Winston season in him if he was in that type of an offense. Uh, you know, this was a league, uh, led the league in adjusted completion percentage, 81%, which accounted for drops from all those non wide receivers he has. I don't know if Daniel Jones could have done more with this season than what he did with it. I think that's the the highest praise you can give him. Uh, but I don't know what the future holds. Like, I don't know if Daniel Jones is going to be in any fantasy discussions ever. And he's not really in one today. He, he could. Like I've been saying, like they could, this team has to revamp their entire pass catching uh, core over there. You, I mean, Wandale Robinson will theoretically be back. He tore his ACL. What was that? Week eleven. Yeah. So, is he going to be ready to start the season? We don't know. Sterling Shepard was an ACL in week three. Now, now that's you know back to back seasons of an Achilles and an ACL. Can they count on him moving into the season? They have to. They have to do something. I, I agree, but I don't know if we're going to be able to take that something and say Daniel Jones is going to do anything with it the way that we were talking about uh, giving an elite weapon to Justin Fields. Yeah, but he I mean, he could become like a Kirk Cousins tier of sure. fantasy wide receiver. I, th- I think I, I, they built a good NFL team around the players that they had. If they were to get a wide receiver core that – would say, hey, let's open this up for Daniel Jones. I don't think he's going to protect the ball as much. I think you're going to end up with more turnovers. We've had enough time to see what he is as a player, so I'm I'm not I'm never going to he, maybe you for saw fantasy, him with bad coaching for fantasy purposes. It's uh, obviously he runs the ball, so he can have some good games. I think in a, in a streaming conversation, but I I would never leave a um, a non. Uh, best ball league with Daniel Jones as my one quarterback. I, I, I don't Five see Five games that. inside the top 10 at the position on the season. Yeah, and some of those were, were really good games because of his rushing ability and obviously no wide receivers, but I, I don't think he is the guy. The The three names that I think are, are worth bringing up before we end the show, they, they, had, they dealt with injuries this year, but coming in at five, six, and eight respectively in, in, in the truth metric, but not in the top 10 but finishers. But not in the top 10 finish on the season would be Lamar Jackson, Kyler Murray, and Dak Prescott. Those sure. guys were good for fantasy. They missed games, so they didn't finish as a top 10 quarterback options. Of Which is the- why we're talking about Daniel Jones and why we're talking about Jared Goff. Exactly. Now, Kyler's going to be a whole different discussion. I don't think we really need to get into him. We don't no. know his coach. We don't know his health. He probably won't be there week one, and we'll discuss that a lot as the offseason goes on. Uh, Lamar and Dak, though, Dak was very good. Yes, uh, Dak finished number eight in the truth is. metric, and um, you know, obviously, <laughs> do you guys remember when they're like, "Oh, Dak should be replaced <laughs> because we're winning games while he's injured"? What nonsense that was! He's that's a team that you know, I wouldn't be surprised if there's another offensive weapon that gets added to that roster. Sure, uh, Jared Goff. I would be talking about Dak as a. Super Bowl champion. That, that oh one, boy, that one at least could be plausible. <laughs> uh, Jared Goff was eighteen percent great, thirty five percent good, forty seven percent bust. I think Goff was funny because he was somewhat predictable. Oh, he, as a streamer, he was super predictable. He was like the super streamer at the quarterback position. Was is he at home? Was he at home in a plus matchup? 
boom, you play him. Is he on the road against a really, really inferior opponent? Then maybe. Then maybe it's going to work. Anything else? Yeah. Bail out. Jameson Williams, though, going to be back, healthy. He's a dynamic playmaker, can change an offense with Amon Ra. Uh, this is a team on the rise. They didn't make the playoffs. They were as close as you can get. And Goff seems to be part of their future, so I wouldn't ignore him completely in fantasy. I think that they could put him in a position where, you know, their defense is middle of the pack. They're in these battles week in, week out, but you have more explosive plays. Yeah, I mean, if if you're not able to grab one of those great options at quarterback, the the guys that in this, you know, the truth metric rank far ahead of Goff, if you don't grab one of those players in your draft and you are going with a late approach, Kirk Cousins and the Geno Smiths are going to go far ahead of Jared Goff. And I don't even know if they're actually better with the weapons he's going to have, the offensive line he's going to have, the continuity with the coordinator going into another year. Um, so I, I agree with you. Jared Goff is probably one of the super late, like, you know, just you, use your last pick on him type of quarterbacks that I would rather leave with him than Daniel Jones. Uh, his ceiling to sure. me is, is, is better. And factor in the, the touchdown luck of Mr. Jamal Williams just stumbling and finding himself in 17 rushing touchdowns because they were on the one yard line like every other drive. And like if those touchdowns, just a few of those bounce in the direction of, of Jared Goff in a passing touchdown, then then he's even higher on this list. Yeah, what did he end with total touchdowns? It was 29 passing touchdowns. I mean, that's wild. 29. Almost double Daniel and one, Jones. And one running back had 17. That's yeah. a lot of scoring. All right, uh, that is going to do it for today's episode of the show, the first quarterback truth episode. There will be a second, and there will be many more as we break down this past season. Uh, I, I learned a lot today. I feel I like hope, I've been educated. Hope the listeners did as well. So uh, quarterback truth episode number two coming up next week. And if you want a bonus episode of the show, mailbag show, go to jointhefoot.com, become a part of our team. Goodbye. Bye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.